Good morning. It is a good morning. Oh, that that sounded great to hear that echo back again. Uh, I know that over the course of the last months we've been on a journey and we're going to continue on that journey over who knows how long as we try and figure out how to best navigate all this. Uh, however, welcome back. Uh, As our numbers continue to improve, I want to thank our health and safety team for uh, doing something that has never been asked of any team in this church uh, for a very long time, and that's to navigate something that no one saw coming. So can we celebrate our health and safety team today? All right. I am Jim Barth. I'm the pastor here. I'm blessed to be worshiping with you today. Uh, a couple things I want to remind you about. Uh, we continue to... to cut down on touch points. So you're going to notice uh, offering plates at the front and at the back. If you wish to give of your offering this morning, I invite you to do that either during the offering time. You can walk to one and put it in. As you come in or as you leave, you're welcome to uh, put it in there as well. Uh, also, if you have a prayer request, there is a prayer request number printed in your bulletin. Uh, please text message your prayer requests. I receive it up here on the tablet, and then we can pray for those together this morning. Uh, the only other thing that I'd like to remind you as we gather together, uh, we are, uh, we are in inviting you to sing. Uh, we're just asking that you leave your mask on while singing, okay? All right. Uh, all of that to say, a couple other announcements here. Uh, church council meeting is today at 11 o'clock, right after the service. We're going to meet upstairs in the filling station. Uh, that'll be in person and online on Zoom. Uh, the women's book study just kicked off this last Thursday. They continue for the next uh, five Thursdays. So if you wish to be a part of that, uh, you can. Uh, and the big news is the closet is now accepting donations. So all that stuff that you were holding on to waiting can now be dropped off. Merry Christmas, Ella. Uh, and last, last but not least, I just want to uh, remind you of the town hall meeting that will be taking place next Sunday uh, at 11 o'clock. It's going to be following the worship service, but it, we just need time to be able to set up tech in between the end of the service and the beginning of the meeting. Uh, so it's going to be at 11. The main topic of conversation for the town hall is going to be the budget for 2021. Uh, where we are, the the council is going to present and vote on the budget. So uh, the council is t is reviewing the budget at our meeting today. Uh, with that meeting, uh, they are going to be approving a budget, uh, which will then be sent out this coming week for you to look over, for us to discuss on the 24th. Okay, good, very very good. All right, so then. You know, it's funny. We haven't had to put like the little the little asterisks next to stuff in such a long time, inviting people to stand that that never went back into the bulletin. But something tells me you remember when to stand. So uh, let's let's join now uh, together in the call to worship. Thanks be to God for such wondrous love. We come with overflowing hearts. Praise be to God who offers us hope.
Yeah, so uh, Kylan, just before we start in, in prayer, uh, Kylan, if you want, try and disconnect stuff and, and try and reconnect it. I really don't know what to do with the sound, uh, why it's doing that. All right, let's, uh, let's join together now in a time of, of prayer meditation, and we will start with silent prayer. As we gather together today, we come giving you thanks for this time and the space that we can be together. We thank you so much for your presence in our lives, for your guidance, for your help, for the love that you have poured out over us, for your mercy and compassion. We give you thanks. God, I ask that you help us. Help us to embody that same kindness and compassion. Help us to be able to, to see you in the lives of others. Help us 
to recognize your work and with boldness to join it. God, as we come together, we also come with heavy hearts for what is going on in the world around us, for what looks like chaos in our country and in our world. God, help us to bring your light in the midst of this darkness, to live as your people with boldness. Help us to speak out against violence and distress and to care for those that are being hurt the most. Help us, God, to love between the distance between our beliefs. Help us to love between the differences of our opinions. Help us to love. so that we might again care for each other. God, help us to embody your light in everything we do, everything we say. wherever we go. We pray for your unity. God, for those that are grieving, we pray for your comfort and peace. For those that are going into surgery this week, we pray that you lead and guide the doctor's hands. For those who have come out of surgery, we pray you continue to heal. For all of these, God, for those that are on our hearts, the names that are on our hearts and minds, we lay them before you and ask that you continue to work in through and around them. And as you taught us to pray, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together in our next hymn, Alleluia 186.
So as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings this morning, I am just so grateful uh, for our tech folks. <laughs> uh, without our tech folks over the last couple of months, including this morning, my phone was lighting up a few minutes ago saying the audio is bad, the audio is bad, and whatever Kylan did worked. So uh, we are... We are so grateful for our tech folks. So for all of all of you that, that give of your time in this way, uh, we are so thankful for you. Uh, and I'll also give a, a pitch that if you want to learn any of the tech, uh, you can ask Barbie. She will she will help get you set up with uh, folks to train you, uh, and and you can help out with that. All right. As an act of worship this morning, let's present God with our tithes and offerings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit. Would you pray with me? Holy God, as we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, make us bold in following. May we give more readily, love more deeply, show mercy and compassion more extravagantly, and seek justice for others courageously. Help us to walk in the steps of the one we follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare for our children's time this morning, uh, we continue to learn uh, the verses of uh, Star Child and then hear a message from our puppets. Hello, hello again, boys and girls. This is verse two. It's street child, beat child, to place left to go. I'm sorry, no place left to go. Hurt child, used child, no one wants to know. Okay, there we go. Street child, beat child, 
no place left to go. Hurt child, used child, no one wants to know. This year, this year, when the day arrives, when Christmas comes for Truman Owl is very wise. Truman Owl is full of wisdom. Let us listen now with ears and eyes about Jesus' ways and God's kingdom. Hello, boys and girls. We're glad to see you're back. Today, we are going to be learning about respect. Ah, and that will be with Lammy and Curly. They're going to explain it. You know, when I first was reading through this, it kind of made me sad because some people think that it's funny to call your parents like the old man and the old lady. I, I know. I think that's very disrespectful. But I don't know why people do it. It's something maybe they learn from others, you think? I don't know. But we're going to watch Lammy and Curly kind of explain that it's probably not right to do that. Okay. Hey, Lammy. Hey, Curly. You seem excited today. I am. My old man said I could go to the movies with everybody tonight. Who said you can go to the movies? My old man. At first he said no, but then I really let him have it. Well, what do you mean you let him have it? Yep. I told him that it wasn't fair because he never lets me go anywhere. But Curly, he lets you go lots of places. Why didn't he want you to go? Uh, Today is my grandmother's birthday, and we were going to have cake and stuff. Curly, are you really sure you want to miss your grandmother's birthday? Yep. I mean, why would I want to sit around and watch an old lady blow out candles? Well, I can't believe that you are talking like this. Like what? Well, you are being very disrespectful. First, you called your dad, your old man, and then you said, why would I want to sit around and watch an old lady blow out candles? I did? Well, that was wrong. Well, I'm glad you think so. Think so? I know so. My grandma can't blow out any candles. She always needs help. Curly, could, should be, we should be respectful or careful to show the proper respect to everyone. That means our parents, our teachers, our friends, and those in leadership. Everyone. What do you mean? Well, I mean, everybody deserves a little respect. I'm giving everybody as little respect as possible. No, Curly. I mean, we should have a high regard and consideration for everyone. God wants us to show respect to each other and especially to honor our parents and grandparents. Yeah, but you know what my dad is like. Well, sure I do, Curly. He's great, and it's obvious that he loves you a lot. Are we talking about the same guy? Don't be silly, Curly. Of course we are. Think about how blessed you are to have a family that cares for you. I would think that you would want to show them love and respect while you still have them a part of your life. I guess you're right. Grandma's about a million years old already. 
I don't know how many more birthdays she gets to have. I think maybe I should stay home and help her blow out the candles tonight. That's a good idea. Maybe you should think about apologizing to your dad, too. What? Why? You know why. You were really out of line today. Even if you hadn't argued with him about your grandma's birthday, you called him old man to me, and that's disrespectful. But he didn't hear me. That doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, of course. Sure. Uh, no, I, I guess it doesn't. I guess it doesn't. Okay. You win. Tell everybody I have to do a, a movie another time. I'm going to spend some time with my family tonight. I think that's a good choice, girly. Yep. Wow, that was such a good story, don't you think? I know. And they explained it so well. Boys and girls, show respect not only to each other, like your friends, but definitely show respect to your teachers and adults and older people because that's the kind and nice thing to do. And that's what we want to be, kind and nice and respectful. Till next time, see you. feel like they were talking about me. My birthday is this week, and I'm old. You know, my, my grandma always said you're only as, uh, age is just a number. Yeah. Age is just a number. Right, wait till you get there. <laughs> the reading today is from John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, G now Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? God, I ask that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing and glorifying to you. Amen. So this week we continue on our sermon series called Follow Me, where we are looking at Jesus' invitation for us to follow uh, and, and recognizing the transformation that takes place in that act of following. Last week we, we talked about uh, Epiphany and we looked at Jesus' baptism and, and uh, 
talked about that phrase, the heavens were torn apart. They were torn open. Uh, remembering where we ourselves need to be transformed and torn open so that we might allow God's light to shine through our lives. Now, last week I talked about how we are going to be in the Gospel of Mark, and and I did say the caveat that we were going to jump into John just for this Sunday, and then we're heading back into Mark. Um, so every time we come into John, I just want to reiterate the what I what I always say, uh, and I don't know if you'll remember. John doesn't talk about what Jesus did; he talks about who Jesus is. John is a spiritual gospel; it is not. Uh, historical recollection of the life of Jesus. Uh, so when we hear these verses, John is very good at giving sort of like the surface level teaching and also another deeper level teaching underneath that. This morning, we are going to look at the surface level teaching because I believe that what is going on here in this encounter, we need to be reminded of. Um, so as we look at this this encounter, I think we first need to uh, understand what this phrase "follow me" actually is referring to. Uh, we hear Jesus say this to Philip uh, the moment that he sees him. Right? He says uh, in the first verse that we heard today, he told Philip, "Follow me." If we hear someone, if we had someone walk up to us and say those same words to us, what would we do? Walk behind them? Walk with them? The words, language that we might use in our day and age is come with me, right? Maybe not so much follow me, but come with me by moving in the same direction. This is this is part of the Greek understanding here of what this phrase follow me ultimately means is to come alongside. But to come alongside what? What Jesus is referring to in this follow me, what Jesus is inviting us uh, to follow is this understanding of a teacher and a pupil, right? Ultimately, uh, it is referring to the idea of becoming a disciple, which a disciple is a pupil of a teacher, Jesus being the rabbi or our teacher, where, where as a disciple you would learn and live the same values and goals as the rabbi or teacher that you're following. So you can still hear these, these ideas of moving together, understanding together, learning together. Those words follow me, take us into a deeper, more intimate relationship and connection with Christ and God, allowing the Holy Spirit to be at work with inside of us. Okay, So this, uh, to me, is what it means to, to follow Jesus, is to move in the same direction with the same values and the same goals as our teacher. Now in this in this story uh, that we hear about Philip and Nathaniel, uh, these are our, our main characters, right, in this story, Jesus, Philip, and Nathaniel. Um, let's just take a moment and talk just a little bit about who this Nathaniel is uh, or what he might stand for. Not much is known about this disciple. Uh, in fact, the only gospel that he is mentioned in is John. Some scholars, however, do believe that Bartholomew, who we hear about in the other three gospels, could be the same person that John refers to as Nathaniel. Uh, some scholars believe that Bartholomew would be Nathaniel's last name. So in the other gospels, he might still show up, but we're not quite sure. The flip side of that is some scholars say that Nathaniel wasn't a real person to begin with, but a representation, that he could represent a human trait of pride and prejudice uh, and the need to listen to the call. So you have everybody on, on, 
on these uh, these these different uh, in these different conversations around whether or not Bartholomew is the same Nathaniel, uh, or if Nathaniel was a real person at all, or if he was meant to be a placeholder in the story for who? You and me, <laughs> us together. All right. So let's let's take a look at this encounter. I think this is without a doubt. Uh, I have I have five of my favorite top Jesus encounters, and this is one of those five because I believe that it speaks to it speaks to us in a consistent basis during any part of life over and over and over again. Uh, this is one of those stories that I believe that you could read every day and go, oh, okay, let's try this again. All right, so let's jump in and see what is going on here. Uh, first off, we hear Philip. Uh, Philip is Nathaniel's friend. Philip has Jesus ask him, follow me. Philip gets all fired up. He is excited for what he is seeing, what he's hearing, who this person is. Uh, and so he he wants to run and go tell his friend. And what does he tell his friend? He tells his friend that the one who Moses and the and the prophets wrote about I just met, in our day and age we would say, and my mind was blown, right? My mind was blown. I can't believe it. I just met him. There is no doubt that what Philip is talking about here is the Messiah. Philip is is telling Nathaniel that it is Jesus of Nazareth who is the Messiah. This is exciting news. This is the one we've been waiting for. What's Nathaniel's response? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, how many times have we had a response like that? Where someone shares something with us and our initial thought is, really? Are you serious? See, Nathaniel's response connects to us. Now, uh, surprise, surprise, there is much debate about why Nathaniel would even say this. So let's just talk just a little bit about uh, what Nazareth looked like at the time of Jesus. Nazareth was a very uh, small, traditional town. Uh, well, I guess relatively small uh, through the lens of the um, uh, Greco-Roman time period. There was about 1,600 to 2,000 folks that lived in the town of Nazareth. It was about four miles from Sephoris, which was a massive city at the time. And so... Uh, some believe that Nazareth was where more of the servants for the folks that lived in Sephora, Sephoris, excuse me, Sephoris, uh, lived. And so Nazareth could have had sort of this um, low view of itself during this time period. So maybe that's why Nathaniel would say something like this. The other sort of theory or idea is that Nathaniel is not uh, talking about Nazareth through the uh, actual city sense, but more of the religious sense. Because was the Messiah supposed to come from Nazareth? Anyone remember where the Messiah was supposed to come from? Bethlehem, right? Right? Bethlehem is where the prophet said the Messiah was going to come from. But this is Jesus of Nazareth. No one asked for his birth certificate, though, right? Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but his title connected him to Nazareth. So uh, there are some that believe that Nathaniel's bias was probably religious rather than domestic, because he was anticipating a Messiah from Bethlehem, not from Nazareth. Now, I just dropped the word in there. Did you catch it? Bias. I think this is one of the most important ideas that come out of this encounter. 
when we are looking at this at the surface level, that word bias. What's a bias? Prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. It is believed that biases can be innate or learned. We all have them, right? We all struggle with them, right? Do they keep us from following? Philip's response to Nathaniel's bias is probably one of the most important pieces of this story to, to pick up on. What is his response? Well, then just stay here and be underneath the tree uh, and just don't believe what I have to say. Is that what Philip said? No, he said, come and see. Come and see. Nathaniel's immediate response was, what good can come out of Nazareth? And Philip's response is, well, why don't you come and see? It's a beautiful response. Now, how many of us, when, when our response is like Nathaniel's, would actually leave and go and see? There is so much going on in these verses that I think challenge each one of us almost to our very core. Nathaniel gets up from relaxing, hanging out underneath a tree. In my mind, I sort of see it as sipping coffee on the couch. Gets up and leaves to be able to go and experience who this person is, this Jesus of Nazareth. He doesn't give the power to his bias, but he goes to check this guy out for himself. And when he does, he, ex he experiences something that he never saw coming. He experience, experiences a miracle from this Jesus of Nazareth. When he first meets him, he says, look at this guy. Well, and, uh, look at this Israelite. There's a reason why he uses that word. That's, that's where you get into the deeper conversation as to what's going on here. We're just going to stay right here. Look at this guy. I saw you. <laughs> yeah, you saw me. Yeah, you were hanging out underneath the fig tree. Say, what? That's how I hear this conversation going on in my head. And Nathaniel in that moment realizes that there is something special about this person standing in front of him. And guess where he comes from? Nazareth. He sees something special. Now, side note, fig tree. Uh, bonus, extra credit, free of charge. Teachers often taught disciples underneath fig trees because of their shade. There were other trees in that area of the world. So for Jesus to say fig tree was enough to impress Nathaniel, which then Nathaniel calls Jesus what? Oh, you must be the son of God. Jesus then tells him, well, just you wait. If you think me seeing you underneath that tree is impressive, Come along with me, follow me, and I'll show you so much more, so much more. You will see greater things than this. In this moment, Nathaniel's bias is overcome, and he is allowing this experience of meeting Jesus to bring him into a new transformed space. My thoughts for us this morning. Are we open?
to overcoming our biases in the same way. By going and seeing. Are we open to experience this transformational compassion of Jesus? How does Jesus respond to Nathaniel uh, when he comes before him? Does he treat him like garbage? He welcomes him as one of his own and invites him to follow. Will our hearts be open to new possibilities? Will our hearts and minds be open to this transformational work of following Jesus? So the question that I invite you to reflect on today, how will you answer Jesus' summons? Follow me. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you. We thank you for calling us. We thank you for calling us to follow you. Help us, God, to embody your spirit more each day so that we may not allow our bias to keep us from loving those around us. God, we lay them before you. Remove them from our hearts so that we may dive even deeper into your love and grace so that we may show more of it in our lives. God, we love you. We thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. We're going to sing together our closing hymn, which is the summons. Will you come and follow me if I but call?
As we go from this space today, I invite you to go prepared and ready to follow Christ and to be open to go and see. Go and live out God's love. Amen. Have a great week.